the bad hips this side. It's a good hip now. This is the better hip. You're right. You're right. Improved. Thank you. This Thank is you. A improved knee. You got your knee surgery sure. how long ago? A year ago, you said? 16, I think. Oh, in 16, right. Yeah. And you're moving like a champ. Yeah. No, you don't even think about it. No pain. When I first met Brendan Fraser, who we're talking, that's your full name, right? Brendan it's, Fraser? It's Fraser. Fraser. I think you should with a razor. <laughs> you should try standing yeah. closer to it. I know. <laughs> I didn't even know this happened. I didn't. This you is two days. One. Two days of not shaving. <laughs> but Brendan, you were in a movie called Airheads. Remember when I discovered you? Yes. I, you were just a kid. Dude. Remember when Paulie discovered you and I stole you from Paulie and said, "Get on over here." Is that how it shook out? Get out of here. What one first? Airheads or Encino Man? Encino Man. See, and then I saw you, and I was like, "This guy shouldn't just." Be caveman, he should be in a band. <laughs> and I did not. And then what? Yeah. Then you went to Michael? Michael Lehman was very against you. He was like, I don't get it. Are I don't see the caveman me? being in this movie. And I just said, he can do other shit. Are you pulling my chain right now? 100%. And I eventually went to his house like four in the morning, woke him up, and he's like, Who are you? I said, Never mind that. But just know that Adam Sandler ain't going to be in Airheads unless old <laughs> Frazier is in it. So he changed his little tune. He flew out to Chicago to meet me. Well, I don't remember all that shit. I just remember the- Well, he, he he's saying a different tune then for well, whatever he's a you... liar. He's a <laughs> filthy liar. He didn't want you, I did, and the rest is uh, pretty good. You had a good life cost of it. Yeah, way Thank to go. Thank you. My pleasure, man. You kidding me? I was pulling for you. I kept saying, and Paulie sure was against it. He <laughs> kept saying, just in case we do NC you know, do I don't want him doing other shit. And I said, yeah. don't well, do that. Dan. That's Polly. It's very. Polly cool. wanted to be in Airheads. I think. <laughs> he did. He wanted Arquette's part. He did? Of course he did. And we got to send one person out. I'll go. One of the hostages, doof. Sorry. But not me, man. <laughs> it's just too cool. You were the leader of the band. Of uh, the Lone Ranger. The Lone Rangers. Rangers? That was a joke in the movie. Yes. And you pluralize. That's right. <laughs> the Lone Rangers. Do you it, remember the name of our song? Yeah, it Degenerated. That's right. I have a cassette at home, actual cassette. <laughs> you do? Of, of the demo that we did with Rob Zombie. That's sick. Serious. That's sick. I found it in a, a box of crap at my desk. That was one of the best shoots of my life, without a Wasn't doubt. It great? It was the best. Just time. up all night. Yes, so many nights. weeks shoots. on end. We would drive to the Fox lot. Get there like around 4.30 yeah, or something sun's at going night. Down. Sun's going down. We'd have our snacks, get into our clothes, do our scenes, and man, was that the best party of all time. That's that plaza. It was the Die yes, Hard. The build. Die Hard. That's what we were so excited that they yeah. shot Die Hard there. We took it very serious. You took it. You took it very serious. I did. You, I took myself very seriously. In those but, but you took acting very serious ever since I know you. It's not like a light, fun movie like just let's have a good time. You took every line, every scene. It meant a lot. I remember watching you actually improvising while on film, which was a big deal. Uh, yeah. No, no, because Layman would go, just, you know, go, 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 go. Really? And as long as, yeah. And uh, it, right. like, how much you left in the magazine? Oh, we got about 90 seconds. Okay, Adam, go. Oh, that's funny. It was thrilling to watch because we take that kind of for granted now that things are digital and you can just turn on oh, like right. a light switch. We right? shot on film, but we I stuck mostly with what he told me to say. Yeah, it was good. Rich Wilkes wrote the script. Rich Wilkes, and we loved him. He was the only guy taller than you. That's true. I, I think he was the real life Chaz Darby. Yes, yes, yes. The yeah. first day of work, he came up and he said, "Man, your hair looks awesome. <laughs> what can they do for me, man?" What was it? A gluey wig? Oh, yeah, it was gaff quad. I got my head shellacked right underneath a wig, yeah. and then this thing screwed on, and then pins crossed over. Oh, it. Right, it was a right. form. So it's a headache, guaranteed. Guaranteed headache. hat you cannot take off. Right, right. Plus right. headband. Yes. Yeah. Worth it. It was worth it. Yeah, you looked like a hundred percent rock and roll. And Steve yeah. did too. He had Steve the sleeves. Yeah. He had a Betty Boop tattoo. Yes, sort of, he did. Sort of That's nudie, right. and every night. Before he went home to his his uh -huh. two year old Lucian, yeah. yeah, he would have it removed. Yeah, he, he didn't, didn't want to scare his little boy. No, he Daddy didn't. didn't get a tattoo while you were gone. Well, not of a, another a lady. Not of a woman that's not yeah. mommy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was sweet. Every night was good food. Good uh, Farley. Remember Farley was in the movie. Absolutely, I and did. Farley he terrorized the craft service truck. <laughs> 
But uh, I think we actually, when we shot that movie, probably was on a diet. He was. So he was like a little calm. He was a little calmer on the craft service than you had. But I definitely destroyed that thing. I loved him. Absolutely. We had fun together. I think he shot like maybe two weeks and we all hung out. Yeah. Nighttime. Man, that was probably the most fun I ever had on a movie. All of us were young. We jumped off the parking structure. Buddy, that was incredible. We crowd surfed. Now, this is the truth on that jump. Yeah. We jumped off the thing and landed on a mat maybe 15 feet below us, right? Not that big of a stunt. I thought for sure I could handle that. I landed in such a stiff way that I heard my neck go, K -k -k -k. I heard everything, but I didn't want to. Uh, you don't say anything about I it. I couldn't say anything because I would be humiliated. You two guys got up laughing, you and Buscemi. I was like, I, I'm supposed you to You completely collapsed your neck backwards. It was awful. You didn't turn into I it. I didn't know what I was supposed Where to do. You? I was never a gymnast. I would go on the trampoline at the Jewish Community Center growing up, saw everyone else do well on it. I had the same thing happen to my neck on that thing when I was like nine. Oh. I'm not good at jumping and landing on my back. Don't do that. I got to stop. It me, okay? <laughs> yes. The guy who smashed into trees for a living. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> You went on to do so many. You went on, first of all, to leave Airheads and then get very jacked for George of the Jungle. I was disappointed how good you looked in that. You weren't supposed to do that to us. You were supposed to remain like a, a the, human. The, the wardrobe was that there was no wardrobe. He, yes. George eats bananas and swings around all day. And wears a long you did right by the character, but you did wrong by us, man. You made us feel bad about ourselves. <laughs> but you now, though. Were you oiled up at all during George? Oh, I was waxed, greased, <laughs> uh, starved of carbohydrates. I would yeah. drive home after work and stop to get something to eat. And I needed some cash one day and I went to the ATM and I could not remember my pin number because uh. my brain was misfiring. <laughs> Banging on the thing. I didn't eat that night. Oh no. How about that feeling though? When you have to eat right for a movie and it's four months long or whatever the hell it is. What a terrible. <sighs> well, we can talk about that. I made a movie about a guy who, yeah, who had eating issues. There's a movie. Uh, did you see the whale? I, I've seen the whale. Yes, I. You're uh, just really. My heart was broken throughout the whole movie. Do you ever get the feeling that people are incapable of not caring? You rehearsed a lot for this. Three weeks. That, that four gave us three weeks. That that's never you. You don't get three weeks to rehearse no. with actors. You know? So you guys were all there hanging out, doing scene to scene rehearsals, yep. and also getting more and more comfortable with each other. And you learn your job. You know, imagine that you're yeah. rehearsing. Yeah. In a meaningful way before you show up to shoot it. Amazing. Yes. It, it seems like it's the fundamentals, but it's rare. We you it's know rare. It, it yeah, normally it costs so much. Yeah, we, we show up there with the sides and scratch our heads and kind of go, you know, it would be good if, you know. And, yeah, and yeah, absolutely. Turn and burn, but uh, everyone wound up knowing what they were doing. So Aronofsky kind of led led everyone through what he was envisioning, or he watched what you guys were thinking and took it from there, or was it a combination? I'm sure. Both, combination. Right. Yeah. I mean, he said if he wasn't a director, he would have been a baseball umpire. Uh-huh. He knows the call. He sees everything. Right, right, right. And he's the last word. Right. As a director. However, unlike a baseball umpire, he gives credit where the best ideas come from right away, That's which beautiful. I admire. Yes, great of course. Deal. That doesn't happen a lot on film it sets. It makes no difference where the best idea comes from. It's as long all as about getting That light bulb in. is there. Absolutely. You know, and it's useful. We started talking about it in January of 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, he, and he told me what he was going to do. He didn't know if he was going to make the movie for all the reasons. And then March 2020 came along, and we all know what happened. Everything shut down. So right, right. the film went on ice. And um, Well, that must have killed you. I kept the faith, but, yeah. you know, I, I've seen that ship sail plenty of times before. Sure. And, you know, I don't take it personally, but yeah. I was hopeful. And I was lucky enough to work with Steven Soderbergh on No Sudden Move with a really cool cast in Detroit at the time, later that October. And then... He texted me in sort of typical Darren fashion. He starts the conversation right in the middle. Uh -huh. This is the your research. Act. 
you're yeah. gonna you're gonna watch this. You're gonna read this, and and uh, hey, you know, am I hired? He's like, yes, you're hired. You know, ah, that's the best, man. The, the feeling. Um, that's the best. I had an equal part um, sort of panic attack, and yeah. and uh, and I I felt really calmly overjoyed because I yeah. I I knew that if I'm gonna come back into the world of uh, filmmaking and cinema in mm -hmm. uh, in a meaning full way. I mean, yeah. I, I'm hearing a lot of talk about me, this being a comeback for me, and I, I appreciate that, but I mean, I was never that far away. I've always kept no. busy doing something. I, yeah. I would lose my mind if it wasn't working, but, no. you know, there's so much content in the world that a lot of that can just, you know, slip off the radar. And right. I knew that I would have to make a, a statement of sorts. I have to reinvent myself. Yeah. And I've been lucky enough in the time that I've been making movies to make diverse choices when I can. I actually was at Saturday Night Live at a show and I saw Darren and he said, I'm doing a movie. And he mentioned what he was doing and he said, uh, you know the, uh, you know the uh, guy I cast as, as Charlie, uh, as the, uh, the lead guy I said, who? And he said, you, and I said, and he goes, yeah, you get it. I 100% knew you would crush this. So let's just talk about acting and being being Charlie. And uh, All right. Um, well, he's a man who's hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Yeah. And he lives with obesity because he's been harming himself by overeating. He has regrets about life choices he's made. He needs <laughs> to redeem himself in the very little amount of time that he has left. Yes, he he's that. got like five days left to live. Monday to Friday. Right. And to uh, reach out and pick up the phone and call his daughter, played by Sadie Sink, is easier said than done. She's understandably enraged yeah, for having she, been hurt she so badly. Definitely comes in hot. She's she's not ready for this. Sadie Sink has an uncanny ability to focus rage in a way that I've never seen. Uh -huh. in actors yeah, I, I had a front row seat to watch this kid. Right, just right. come of age right there. I was constantly going up on my lines because I get lost in those big green eyes. Yeah. It's like a, a beautiful volcanic fire that she just focuses. Yes. And she was just always winning the game ball every day. Uh -huh. Every day. Uh -huh. Darren Aronofsky, we should mention, directed this yes. movie. Yes. And he was constantly saying, just do another. We're all here anyway. He just wanted to see what she would do. Right. He did That's the, neat. the same with Hong Chao, who, who played... Charlie's friend and last connection to her late brother. Yeah. And it's an awkward relationship that they have because of the position he's put her in to render her this sort of de facto enabler. I mean, she's a medic. But, but she loves you. And she loves him. Yeah. But when he asks for what he needs to feed his, let's call it what it is, his addiction. Yeah. She does it because she knows it's what he needs. She can't yeah. make water run uphill, right. you know? Right. And she's humane, oh, but my, she knows yeah. that it's not good for him. Right, yes. And, and watching him die from Watching it. him suffer from this and being frustrated because he refuses to go to a hospital oh, for yeah. all manner of complicated reasons that's right. complicated by some issues regarding money that he wanted to give to his daughter. But the truth right. of it is, and I've learned this, is that the healthcare system is such a quagmire that people who live with obesity who may want to uh, get a bariatric procedure that very well could save their lives, mm -hmm. find themselves often in a really unfair limbo, which is that they must, in a way, prove that they can lose X amount of weight before they'll be given permission by the healthcare system and insurers, doctors. So it, it so I don't you know, have to lose weight in order to yeah. get it. That's terrible. It's unfair. Yeah. To me. When you were moving around that place and having to grab the handles and having to just rock yourself up out of the couch yeah. and all that stuff was so For hard. Charlie just to take to his feet was yeah. You know, like an Olympic event in deadlifting. Oh my God. What did you have on as as an actor? What it, were you wearing? Anything? Uh it was created with a a, a digital rendering a scan that was right. done with an iPad that the producer came to my house. I stood in the driveway in the freezing cold because it was COVID and we're all scared of each other. And uh, yeah. anyway, that information went to Adrian Moreau in Montreal who built a, a virtual character body of Charlie. This is a process that actually skips a step and it's important because he can create 
uh, the molds that create the appliances, mm -hmm. you know, digitally. So there's, he has absolute dominion over the placement of the size of the pores on the skin, et wow. cetera. There was a five point harness uh -huh. that had me strapped in uh, pretty, you know, once, once into it, I was in there all day until it came off. Costume pieces themselves were um, contained combinations of airsoft pellets, mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe dried beans, marbles. But the rule was with this yeah. is that the whole look should obey the laws of physics and gravity because we don't see that in films. And I, I really looked. I really looked. I looked at what the Farrelly brothers did. I looked at what Mike Myers did. I looked at what Eddie Murphy did. And that's yeah. just in the last 20 yeah. years. Yeah. Anything before then, it's, it's a cutout silhouette of a costume that's stuffed with batting. And it's right. normally just an athletic actor yeah. inside yes. the, the silhouette of a suit. Yeah. And because you know our, our brains are so tuned to pick out inconsistencies in anything, and in this age of digital, when anything can be created, we see where the seams right. are. Right. And, and it was all in service of just, you know, kind of a mean joke or a one note sort of shtick that I think we're better than. But it's important to say this because there are those who live with this disease. Mm -hmm. And I felt self empowered to be their voice and to be as honest as I could and as authentic as I could in the portrayal of this. I, look, my weight has been all over the map. Mm -hmm. I was muscular guy for George of the Jungle. Right. I, I put on weight to play this role and it wasn't enough. Right. So the body had to go on top of that. And the yeah. two worked together. People are amazing. You always made choices that I never saw coming. Since oh, I know you, I know you since you were very young and you, you would do movies that I would be like, what's he doing? And then I would watch him and I go, shit, I didn't see that coming. You were always ahead of us in thinking differently and caring about your material and making it deep for yourself. And then also you made giant movies. When I saw The Mummy the first time, I remember calling you up and going, I can't believe what I just saw. A giant theater going bananas, like at our full on action fun adventure i was going how the fuck is this guy doing that because i just knew you as as my buddy they gave me a whole list of questions. oh shit and i'll answer we them. all know me can i answer them for you really quick? yeah yeah answer i'll just do a lightning round let's go you do okay. it you ask uh, yes. what appealed to you about the script for hustle you love basketball thank you did you want to be a basketball coach growing up no you wanted to be a player <laughs> how did you prepare for the role <laughs> by playing basketball <laughs> uh, you act opposite nba player Juancho hernandez yeah. in hustle what advice did you give him about acting for the first time show up be cool know your lines <laughs> you'll work it out um <laughs> Is it fun for you to play underdogs? He doesn't play underdogs. Yeah. He plays champions that are overlooked. Ooh! Does it feel good <laughs> to see your movies become the most watched movies on Netflix? Bleep yes. <laughs> I want to talk about you. Let's talk about Punch Drunk Love. Yeah. Man. I want to. Because sure, sure. It showed me that my friend Adam, in the eyes of others who only saw you as the court jester and the clown, isn't going to be relegated to a one note jokester because the truth of any clown is an inherent uh, sadness and and anger. <laughs> yeah. And that's with good reason because they get to speak the truth and pass it off as humor. And that's in Punch Drunk Love with Emily Watson, that was a misfit love story right. that I hadn't seen played out before. You threw her almost straight through a sliding glass door. Is that right? Threw a hammer. I don't remember doing that. It's our career. It's our life. It's movie to movie. You never know. Every movie you take takes months, a year, whatever happens. You can't exactly say, I'm doing this next, and then that's it. You don't know what's coming no. next. Shit comes your way. You connect with it like you did with the whale. Yeah. And you go, I ain't fucking this one up. I'm going, I'm going, this is a gift. I'm going hard. 
I don't want to go home at night and say, God damn, I should have done that. Punch drunk, Paul Thomas Anderson, one of the nicest, smartest, funniest Isn't guys he? I know. He, you would love him. And he would love you. I admire him. Yes, yes. I mean, he fucking doesn't stop making great stuff. Everything he does, I say, shit. I feel like you would just say nice things about me. When I call him up, I go, where the fuck did that come from? Because he's such a sweet, he's just like us. He's just a funny, nice dude. And then gets alone and writes this shit up. And, and he happens just, to be brilliant. And he's a genius. He's just a genius. in case. He's yes, exactly. That script came. I said, let's not, in my brain, I was like, I can't waste this. It's beautiful, beautiful story. As an actor, I never got to do any of this stuff. It just wasn't before. asked of you? Did you feel like you had to, did you have the power to go and say, yeah, I want to do this because it's how I feel and you connected with it? I guess I, in the back of my head, I always knew. I, mean, I studied acting. I yeah. did all that stuff. You went to Tisch? School. I went to Tisch. I studied at Strasbourg. I did all that. I loved it. I, I, I admired acting my yeah. whole life. I loved James Caan. I loved Dustin Hoffman. I loved Nicholson, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. But, you know, I would walk around going, holy shit, those guys are incredible. Yeah. I, it wasn't my first thought. I, I wanted to do Eddie Murphy. I wanted to be Rodney Dangerfield. That's what I came out to do. And then I kept swinging and swinging and swinging and working hard and giving all these opportunities. And then I just lucked out. Paul wrote that movie for me. And I was like, oh, fuck, yeah, I think I could do that. I, I, I that Actually, that was on my mind when I was younger. I got a, obsessed with comedy. But then that came my way. And then any after that, other opportunities, you know, Spanglish, James L. Brooks, loved that man. He wrote this movie. I read the movie with Jim Brooks right in the room, read his script, was going, this fucking movie's amazing. I tried amazing. to make the sandwich from Spanglish. You did? I tried to. It wasn't you as good as yours. No, no, that's because those, at times, maybe it's not my hands in the shot. Let's, let's not talk about that. It. All right, I did work hard on the sandwich. But just shit happens in your career that you luck out. You, you might pursue. Come on, you might call you guys up and say, uh, let's fucking get something I haven't done before. Usually they don't call back with, all right, check this out. It's They're sitting there, too, saying, let's see. Let's see where it comes from. Like the whale, man. All of a sudden, you're giving this shit, and you're just so excited to dive in. And did you work during when COVID was happening? During, I did. During the lockdown? I I did the movie Hustle. We we you shot Hustle during COVID? Yeah, we shot we wow. shot it two two different times. It was a basketball movie. They weren't allowed to play basketball yet. Couldn't have guys sweating on each other. Couldn't no. have that happen. So we shot about five or six weeks of every scene that was in basketball. And then we took a hiatus, I don't know, three, four months, five months. Yeah. Then we came back, the NBA was available, the guys were available to come shoot, and then we shot the basketball stuff back. What was it that. like working with the, with the ball players? I mean, it's so far as like, I'm sure it was the best, because they're performers in their own regard. Oh but, yeah, man, there's but, complete confidence. There's confidence that, that as just human beings, yeah. these guys are the most elite athletes yeah, of yeah, our yeah. time. Did, did, did they sincerely, like, you know, ask, I mean, this might not be their wheelhouse performing for a camera, you know? Then it's right. We've all seen Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, you know, right, acting, right. and it's fun to see, but yeah. he's stiff as a board, and that's part well, of the charm well, of it. But I didn't see that in Hustle. No, no, no. I didn't no. see These that guys, at all. Your whole world's going to change overnight. I got to work. My mom and my daughter, they mean everything to me. Salary's $900,000. He will call in sick. You know, Jeremiah was running the show, and it was just about telling the players, say what you would say. Say what here. you would say. We need this to ultimately happen in the scene. You just basically lived this movie instead of... Really got to fuck around and wow. see. See, I mean, look, this, uh, when you're making a movie, shit has to happen. Yeah, to, make, to and tell the scene story. Right, to tell the story. Right. So we would say, you know, ultimately, you got to get your shot blocked here, mm. but get to it in a way that would make some sense say shit along the way that would make some sense if you guys hated each other or if you guys were teammates or whatever it was. Was your sports scout, what was his name again? Stanley Sugarman. Okay, so Stanley went into the wilds. There's mythological. That's funny. Overcome. Your movie, The Scout. Similar. I, to find. When we were putting this together, somebody said, go watch The Scout, blah, blah, blah. And I already saw The Scout. And I yeah. said, I don't want to feel jumpy about taking anything from The Scout. This wasn't that. No, it was not, different. It was different. No, 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 it was no, different. No, no. Yeah, yeah. You know, apart from going and finding. Yeah, finding you know, a, a gem. 
Yeah, the Yonkai yeah. Challenge. Yeah. You know, fi finding in, in the scout, it was like, I found Kong. You know, yeah, I'm yeah, going to bring right, him back right, to exactly. the city. It's and you a, found him in Spain. Is, yes, in, yes. Juancho Hernan Gomez, amazing guy. I love this kid. He's, he's like 25 now. Yeah. We text. I talk to him. I pull for him so hard because I, I like really, truly love this guy. Obsession is going to be talent every time. You got all the talent in the world, but are you obsessed? When you're asking him, are yes. you obsessed with yeah, basketball? Right. That, to me, was awesome to say out loud because when I was young and I was 18, 17, 19, 22, right. I was fucking similar to what I was saying to Juan You were that character. kid sitting on the I stage. I was saying, I don't think of nothing else except fucking comedy. Right. But getting as good as I can be. And was there a mentor who came to you in that way and said, are you for real? I'll tell you, you what, with me? there wasn't a guy who gave me a speech like that. I had my own crazy thing in my head. I made promises to myself. I said, like, right. don't give up. Well, Let's your go. dad had a lot to do with it. And this. then my dad, yeah, of course. Of course, my dad was my coach but, in every sport. But he wasn't as conf confrontational as Stan as Stanley was. No. You know what he was, my dad? He was amazingly calm with giving me confidence. He would just slowly, he would just say, in any situation, school, uh, career, life, he'd be like, he'd kind of talk quietly into giving me confidence. Just First like, time I hosted SNL before yeah. I did the monologue, Lauren walked up to me just uh -huh. before we went live. And he said, oh, I don't be a very good Lauren. He goes, you know, it's, uh, it's all about confidence. And then he just turned and walked away. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. don't try and be funny. Just buy into the reality. That's the same thing when I do stand up. If I walk out confident, we're going to have a good show. If yeah. I walk out with some fear in my head, and that, they see it. Does it fuel you a little bit, though? You the know? fear in the daytime before the show is yeah. probably a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you get out there, if you show too much fear, the audience is they like, what's going up on? on that, right? Yeah. We're here to have a good time. What yeah. are you all tense about? You know? <laughs> so it's, it's, nice. it's nice when you lock into, and it's not a guarantee. Just like Saturday yeah. Night Live, you could go out on that stage where you're overwhelmed, like, holy shit, this is yeah. happening. Or how did you go out, by the way, on SNL? Do you remember? I went out in an out-of-body experience. Yeah, right. And yeah. Uh, I kind of watched. You and watched yourself. I watched myself, and yeah. I learned that the show was pretty much about, about changing clothes. <laughs> Running around in the dark. Right, right, right. Well, people pull your clothes That's off. That's true. Put new ones on. Good. And the rest is just, you know, hit the mark, bark, read, read the damn card. Try not to stutter too much. And I got, I got a wig ripped off my head in a sketch with uh, Anna Gasteyer. Uh-huh. And I started laughing like, <laughs> and uh, I looked up and what, is it Wally who yeah Wally Wally had the cards and he's like going <laughs> oh. like he was like he was like hey stop playing around oh, you know yeah, stop yeah. having fun yeah. stop and get back to the business. yeah don't get too uh impressed with yourself and have fun yeah. in the situation yeah, yeah, it's yeah, here yeah. he's like do your job <laughs> Wally was yelling yeah. at you no he was uh, just doing this, this finger he was finger yelling at you yeah oh it was worse that way it's good you deserved I had a